Five years ago, I was diagnosed with terminal cancer. You didn't see him in his doctor's office ever because he doesn't have an office, does he? No. Belle Gibson was the queen bee of wellness. I think that you really need to get your story straight about the charities. I wanted to be just like Belle. She was what the ultimate goal was. And there are disputed donations of up to $300,000. I felt really disappointed in myself for having been tricked by her. The, the way she led actual cancer sufferers astray. Uh, I decided to stop using conventional medicine and try and find a natural way to heal myself. Right, you claim also in your book that you underwent chemotherapy and radiotherapy for two months. True yep. or false? At the time, true or false. <laughs> Belle Gibson rose to fame at the peak of the wellness industry boom and basically embodied everything that made the wellness industry so compelling to its consumers. She had a seemingly innocent and humble personality combined with health struggles and presented herself as a selfless individual who wishes to help others who also struggle with their health. Her decision of turning away from conventional medicine, despite warnings from her doctors, represented to her followers an act of bravery and rebellion against a system. A system that was owned by Big Pharma, who she believed created more ailments to line the linings of their own pockets as a billion dollar industry, pretending to heal the very people it's only making sicker. According to research by the Global Wellness Institute, the wellness industry has an estimated value of approximately $4.5 trillion and is only continuing to grow at a historic rate. And Bell's story perfectly encapsulated that wellness movement, which, much like Bell Gibson, appealed to those who wanted to take control of their health and who constantly felt alienated and distrusting of the pharmaceutical health industry as well as Big Pharma. Today, we are going to be talking about Belle Gibson, which is a story that has multiple and intricate layers wrapped in a hopeful cover that perfectly hides a hopeless interior of predatory and deceptive practices with a touch of pseudoscience and conspiracy theories. So take a trip with me as we discuss the cancerous lies of Belle Gibson. Iceberg explained. Today's video is proudly sponsored by Lilo. Now, girl, you know that we are talking about the wellness industry. Well, it would only be appropriate to have an intimate wellness product sponsor us today for today's video. Now, if you guys have been following me on Twitch, even on Twitter, or literally anywhere, you guys will know that I am literally obsessed with this brand. So when Lilo reached out to collaborate with me, honestly, I don't think I have ever been more happy to represent a company ever. So Lilo do what I would call intimate wellness products, if you get what I mean. So they basically asked me to speak about my most favorite product ever from their range. And my most favorite product ever is the Lilo Sona Cruise. Now this right here is something that you need. Let me tell you, I was so excited that I shed a single tear the first time that I used it. In fact, I'm going to post a photo right here, right? I'm not even joking. My happiness was so intense, the, in the most intense kind of happiness that one could get, that I cried. I cried, girl. I cried! This product is waterproof and easy to clean, meaning that you can be happy in the bathtub. Fully USB chargeable, meaning that you can be happy on the go. It has eight pleasure settings, meaning that you can be eight times as happy as you were the first time. And Lilo state that they are ahead of their competitors in every aspect. And after trying to find my happiness for so long, I can only agree. See, what makes the Lilo Sona Cruise different is the cruise control capabilities. Now I know what you're wondering. Cruise control? Isn't that for a car, bitch? Oh no, but we're gonna drive. Cruise control means that when the device is pressed up harder against your body, it only gets even more intense. So not only will the sonic waves beam you into another dimension, I don't think you're gonna be able to come back. That's why I said the first time I used it, a single tear rolled down my face. 
It sure did. Listen, people, there is absolutely nothing wrong with making yourself happy. And I want you to be happy at all times. Got you. So if you would like to buy this product for yourself, make sure that you go over to the link in my description box right now so that you guys can get your hands on the Lilo Sona Cruise. They say the happiest places on earth reside in Anaheim, California, and in Orlando, Florida, but I'm telling you the happiest place on earth is right here. As you can already tell, I am super duper enthusiastic about this product because I feel that intimate wellness is very important to every individual. I think we should all have the ability to make ourselves as happy as we deserve to be. But I promise you, absolutely no product has ever compared to this one right here. And this is not me yanking your chain or saying something because I'm being paid to do so. It's because it's genuinely the truth. If you are from my Twitch family, you will have heard me preach about this product a billion times before. So my genuine love for Lilo products, honestly, is has no bounds. So I just wanna say a massive thank you to Lilo for sponsoring today's video. And once again, don't forget to click the link in the description box down below if you guys would like to purchase Lilo products. I promise you I am not steering you wrong. And make sure that you do click the link in the description box down below as it will greatly help my channel if you do. Thank you once again to Lilo for sponsoring today's video. But from one wellness product to a product of the wellness industry, let's continue with today's video. In 2009, a young Australian mother by the name of Belle Gibson was given a terrifying diagnosis. She has brain cancer. The malignant tumour was inoperable and she only has a few months to live. Frightened, Belle tried to buy herself some time by going through radio and chemotherapy. After two months of her treatment, however, against the advice of her doctors, Belle made the radical decision of turning to nature. She would turn away from the conventional medical practices that had been failing her and instead try and heal her body with what she described in her book as natural medicine and Gerson therapy and foods. This risk paid off as four years after the devastating in diagnosis, she was thriving and decided to share her incredible healing journey on social media. Belle, with her soft-spoken, sweet voice and nature and story of bravery and perseverance, quickly began creating a community that cared about her and her journey. And many of the people who were following Belle on this incredible journey were also individuals who had life-threatening illnesses. And now they suddenly had a brand new reason to hope. Soon after she began sharing her journey, Belle's story became national news and she was invited on talk shows and was subject of news articles and eventually became an international wellness mogul. She even got a deal with Penguin Publishing for her very own wellness cookbook, as well as a multi-million dollar deal with Apple with an accompanying wellness app. It was five years ago I was diagnosed with terminal cancer and we launched the whole pantry a year ago and that was, that evolution came through my community. They kept reaching out to me saying, you know, we're also feeling in a space of um, an uninspired space or a space without direction and how are we going to, you know, live the whole life without resources or without something pulling that all together. So that was my responsibility. I mean, we've had our community reaching out to us for a very long time saying we want to see a shopping list and we want to see a cook mode in the iPhone or iPad version and we didn't really see that as a behaviour that was going to work. Um, it wasn't seamless enough, it was too hands-on, it was too messy and Apple have really streamlined that process with us. So what we've done is we've, with our companion app, is we've added a meal planning section. With the meal planning section, you choose the recipes you want to make for a dinner party or for the week ahead, and that pushes all over to the Apple Watch. With the Apple Watch, you can have a hands-free shopping experience in the grocery store. It's been a whirlwind, and that's also, you know, we're really emotional and proud about it, and I have a feeling now that Australia's waking up that 
they're spotting it. The text messages and the, the Instagram comments and the tweets are coming in saying, did we just spot your icon on the new Apple Watch? And you did, and it's exciting. Belle had essentially gone from being a terrified patient whose health one day betrayed her and leading her down like the lonely corridors of hospitals to suddenly an empowered survivor who had inspired people all over the world almost overnight. She was determined to help others who had found themselves in the exact same predicament find health and life again. And she did this by spreading her wellness journey and her wellness message, as well as raising money for charities and organizations through donations from her audience. These donations would essentially be what actually brought down Belle Gibson's house of cards. Belle's story essentially began to fall apart in 2015 when there was a discrepancy about Belle's charitable donations and the actual reality of these donations even existing. Fairfax media journalists Bew Donnelly and Nick Toscano first became interested in the story, having heard rumors of a wellness blogger who built an empire upon claims of curing her malignant brain cancer by changing her diet. They began investigating the story by pulling up Belle's records and studying her public statements, interviews, and social media posts, which they felt was inconsistent. Belle, can I ask, since your um, recent cancer diagnosis, uh -huh. have you changed your treatment at all? In terms of whether mm -hmm. that be conventional or not? Yeah, I have. Um, uh, I don't know how I want to talk about this because I've not talked about it publicly. Following like a German medicine protocol. Every single doctor and practitioner that knows about it or doesn't know about it, all of them are seeing results. You know, which, because they're like, where are these results coming from? And I know. Um, but it's, you know, just um, a medicine which is respected throughout Europe but not here in Australia yet. They also got in touch with an individual who claimed to know Belle personally, who also clarified that they were skeptical of Belle's claims. These two journalists, however, were aware that running a story like this or of this nature, that, you know, Belle fabricated her claims of having cancer in order to build this wellness empire, would be difficult to prove. So they instead decided to take a look at many of the charitable donations it is that Bell had claimed to have done, either by working with or in collaboration with a particular company or donations it is that she said that she herself had given. And when they did that, not only did some of these charities claim to have never received anything from Bell, some of these charities never even heard of Bell at all. So Donnelly and Toscado, the two journalists, reached out to Belle to try and get some clarification, but they found it incredibly hard to get in touch with her. So they eventually sent her a list of 20 questions that they hope she would be able to provide answers for to clarify and corroborate her previous claims. In a later interview with Nick Toscano, he confirmed that their questions were responded with a very long and rambling sort of rebuttal after which they never heard from her again. So she sent us a very long and rambling sort of rebuttal to a lot of our, our questions. We never heard from her again. We tried calling her dozens and dozens of times, left her letters, but she, uh, she wouldn't engage with us. Their first story on Belle Gibson was published in March of 2015 in the Australian online news article, The Age, in which all of Belle's claims and lies 
were exposed. Overall, at the time that the article was published, the total sum Bell claimed to have donated was 300,000 Australian dollars. Yet confirmed donations from Bell actually amounted to approximately 7,000, many of which were only paid following continuous attempts by the charities to actually get the charitable donation that Bell had promised. So two of the claims that this article brought up was from a situation in December 2013. At this point, Bell's social media career was taking off and she hosted an event for her book, The Whole Pantry. This was a charity event in which the earnings were supposed to be donated to three separate charities. One of the charities was a Melbourne-based educational charity called One Girl, who had confirmed that they had never received any money from the event despite continuous attempts to get in touch with Bell for the money it is that she pledged. They did note, however, after people started taking a look at Bell's donation claims that they did randomly receive $1,000 from Bell. The second situation that the article highlights was from May 2014. Bell promoted the sale of her app, the whole pantry app that was on Apple devices, by promising that the proceeds would be divided between two charities. Hmm, I wonder if we've heard this before. One of which was the Bumi Siat Foundation, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, a charity working to prevent mother and infant deaths. Bell had praised her audience for their support of the app and in turn the support of these charities. Yet the representatives of the Bumi Siat charity claimed to have never received anything from Bell Gibson at all. This article led to immediate backlash from Bell supporters, many of these people doubting her claims altogether. They demanded proof of her illnesses, and this wasn't just her audience, this was also her business collaborators as well. Penguin Books, which was the publishing company for Bell's cookbook, demanded for the first time that Bell corroborate her claims on her health and Bell's inability to do so meant that Penguin Publishing pulled her cookbook. US publisher Simon & Schuster, which was working on releasing Bell's book internationally, also have suspended sales upon demands of further clarification. And Apple followed suit by dropping the wellness app. So Bell, attempting to clear her name, I guess, sat down with the Australian newspaper. I'm not just randomly saying that that's actually the name of the newspaper, the Australian newspaper. Basically stating that her cancer claims was a case of a misdiagnosis. And then she also told them that her inability to donate to various different charities that she had pledged to was due to poor financial management on the business side. Shortly after that, Bell then sat down for an explosive interview for 60 Minutes Australia. And when and I tell you, girl, if there is one thing that you're gonna do this evening, it is go and watch this entire interview in full. I'm limited of what it is that I can show you, obviously due to copyright laws and infringements and stuff, but I'll show you what I can. But this interview had my mouth on the floor the entire time and Tara Brown ate her up. I was gagged, I was living. So Belle deciding to like backtrack on her entire wellness journey story, things it is that she had wrote down in her book. She then decides to present this like whole new elaborate story of her cancer diagnosis. She was not diagnosed with cancer by a doctor in a hospital's office like she wrote in her book. She was in fact diagnosed by some alternative practitioner who brought out a random box with lights. And not at their doctor's office, but in her own home. And like throughout this whole 60 minute interview, there are numerous discrepancies between what was wrote in her book, what it is that she had told her audience for several years at this point, versus what it was that she was actually saying when she sat down in the interview. Tara, the interview lady, she asked a brilliant question. She basically asked something along the lines of, you were told that you had less than four months to live by an alternative alternative practitioner. So when your life surpassed the four months, why did you not question the integrity of the tests that you did? Why didn't that raise any suspicion to you? 
Why did you continue with the narrative that you had cancer and beat it? And this is what Bell had to say to this question. Bell, it's all here. It is It is all here. You know, you go on Instagram in 2013. I have been healing a severe and malignant brain cancer for the past few years with natural medicine, Gerson therapy and foods. It's working for me. It is. (laughs) And if any... you didn't have brain cancer. No, I didn't. No. But when I was writing that, I thought that I did. Belle's story of her misdiagnosis just seems to be so weird or like a conspiracy. Apparently she went and had a CAT scan that showed brain tumours that weren't really hers. He brought in scans and it showed a brain tumour. But that wasn't my scan because most recently I went back to the Alfred and I got my full portfolio from them. And I did get that brain scan, but there is no brain tumour there. Doctors were allegedly actively lying to her and giving her pills that they alleged to be oral chemotherapy, as well as giving her incorrect diagnoses of her cancer traveling to her liver, her spleen, etc., etc. And for what reason? Like, what motivation would a doctor have to do this? And she doesn't know. So when the production staff at 60 Minutes had asked for the CAT scans and the details to show proof of this brain tumour that these doctors were saying existed, she could provide the documentation that said that she went for a CAT scan but no reports of any brain tumour or anything was there. The document did say, however, that Belle was concerned that she might have MS. But either way, her scan showed absolutely no abnormalities whatsoever, neither MS or brain cancer, showing that clearly Belle never had cancer in 2011, which was essentially two years before she decided to share her journey and her story online. It was actually 2011, and a neurologist in a 40-minute face-to-face consultation tells Belle her brain scans are normal. We've also checked with medical professionals who say, even if Belle was complaining about MS symptoms only, The MRI would have revealed any tumours in her brain. She definitely knew in 2011 that she didn't. That's two years before she sold her sob story to the world, before she went on Instagram, before she developed the whole pantry app, and before she wrote the book claiming she was healing herself naturally from a malignant tumour. Belle's story instantaneously resonated with multiple individuals who either felt compelled by her young mother story or have had diagnoses or loved ones who have diagnoses of life-threatening illnesses that provides them hope. Their investment in her life story and her journey was essentially what propelled her to be the wellness mogul it is that we knew. She began inspiring her audience to adopt this new healthy lifestyle in order to, as she claims, cure cancer. Thousands of people following in her footsteps to deny conventional treatment. Looking back at this situation, I have to ask myself how nobody doubted the story it was that Belle was telling or was at least skeptical or critical of how there was no receipts, there was no proof for any of the claims it is that Belle had made. Healing a malignant brain tumour with natural remedies and healthy diet is not a story that everybody hears every day. In reality, Belle's story is one that people wanted to believe in because death and illness are things that people are rightfully scared of and possibly being able to take control of something that was so anxiety inducing was appealing to so many people 
I have to question how predatory this situation is because she was providing people with hope in what can be, for most and for many, a very hopeless situation. Belle sold a lie to an extremely vulnerable community and she preyed upon them by selling them something it is that they needed just to get through every single day, day by day. She sold them hope. The way I was being treated while I was on medication was so unbearable for me that I decided to stop using conventional medicine and try and find a natural way to heal myself. Seeing someone like Belle heal themselves through food made me feel hopeful. It made me feel like this was the answer to everything that I had been looking for. I was desperate. My life had totally changed and she appeared to be doing everything right and I felt like I was doing everything wrong. I felt like I was sucked into this process that wasn't working for me. So I felt like, no, I, I need to give this a go to see if this works. Among those who gravitated towards Belle for Hope were the Swartz family, whose then seven year old son, Josh, was ill with terminal brain cancer. The family claims that Belle befriended them in 2013 on social media after hearing about Josh's struggle with cancer. Penny and Wolfgang Schwartz, Josh's parents, claim that they have gotten so close to Belle and that Belle showed them great interest and care in Josh's story and experiences. She would ask him a lot of questions and seemed eager to help, but their relationship ended almost as fast as it began and they have drifted apart. The family then found out through the media that Belle was claiming to her audience that money donated would go to Josh's treatments, which surprised them because the Swartz family had never heard no such claim from Belle herself. But most importantly, they didn't receive any kind of money from Belle for any of Josh's medical expenses. Once Belle's entire story began to raise questions, the Swartz family actually then recalled their conversations it is that they had with Belle and questioned themselves as to whether Belle was speaking to them in order to conduct research in order to make her story seem more believable. As her questions to them when they were conversing was focused heavily on symptoms, they noticed that many details of Josh's story sounded eerily similar to Belle's own story of illness, ailments, and I guess recovery. However, Belle's betrayal of their trust wasn't the worst thing it is that this family had to endure at the hands of Belle. They now had to deal with the growing skepticism following Belle's story. Many people then began to start doubting Joshua's story and would go forth and accuse the family of lying about their son's battle with cancer, calling them con artists, and they would receive hateful messages every day. Not only was Belle's story preying on her audience's fear, it also played on the growing mistrust in the medical industry. At the very least, she gave hope to those who feared the harsh treatments some medical conditions such as cancer require. She made people believe that healing cancer doesn't have to happen in a frightening cold hospital room or come with painful and difficult side effects of treatments that are harsh on the body. Instead, healing can take place in your own kitchen by adding a few wellness practices to your daily routine. At worst, she turned some people away from conventional medical treatment entirely. Belle's account was that chemo and radiotherapy only made her sicker, after all, and that had she had continued this treatment rather than migrating over to wellness practices, she probably wouldn't even be here at all. So, 
What happened to Bell? Well, we know in 2013 that Bell had decided to start sharing her story on Instagram under the handle healing underscore Bell. And that in 2014, she had her business, The Whole Pantry. And she was featured everywhere, including magazines like Vogue Australia. After being exposed in 2015, Bell was then sued for making false charity claims. She was not sued for her cancer claims, however, because the judge felt that the cancer claims were false and that the story behind her diagnoses were, and quote, neither reasonable nor rational, but she would not face any charges in relation to these claims because they could have been the result of a series of delusions about her health condition. In September 2017, Bell was finally fined the total of 410,000 Australian dollars due to the false charity claims. 90,000 for failing to donate proceeds from the sale of the whole pantry app as publicly advertised, 50,000 for failing to donate proceeds from the launch of the whole pantry app, 30,000 for failing to donate proceeds from a 2014 Mother's Day event, 90,000 for failing to donate other company profits, and 150,000 failing to donate 100% of one week's app sales to the family of Joshua Schwartz, a boy who had the inoperable brain tumor. The judge made it known that she would like the money to be donated. So I guess something positive was at the end of this really shitty tunnel. However, we are in 2022, several years later, and Belle has still not paid the fine. In 2019, Bell filed for bankruptcy, yet there was many articles about her in this time period going on vacation and spending money frivolously, showing that she had spent a total of 91,000 Australian dollars between the years of 2017 to 2019, 13,000 of which was splurged on cosmetics, clothing, and accessories. By 2021, Bell had still not paid the fine, of which the interest rose to over half a million Australian dollars. Authorities then tried to recover that money from Bell by raiding her home, but were unable to get anything of any real monetary value. Bell's property, including the car and the house she lives in, is now under a different person's name. A man who Bell claims financially supports her. As of 2020, Bell has claimed to convert to Islam and has been working with an Ethiopian Oromo community, which she claimed adopted her. She claims her name is now Sabontu, and she was seen in a video thanking her new community and Allah for the support that they have shown her. Reports have been made that Bell has been raising money for the Oromo community, who essentially stated that they weren't even aware of Bell and her past. And in 2022, Bell was spotted without her headscarf, and she still has not paid the fine. Belle's story was a spotless reflection of the wellness industry as a whole and their mantra of healthy mind and healthy body. The industry incorporates the promotion of lifestyle habits as well as practices for mental and physical well-being. The main ideology is essentially gaining control by taking your health into your own hands. But the fundamental problem it is that I see here is that the wellness industry and the wellness narrative of steering people away from conventional medicines is because they are preying on the growing skepticism of Big Pharma and whether Big Pharma will actually help you. The conspiracy around that is that Big Pharma is owned by these massive corporations that seek to make people sicker in order to profit and gain from their dependency on conventional medical treatment. But I have to question whether this marketing technique by the wellness industry is kind of like a setup, if you will, in order to take money from 
from the healthcare industry enterprise and put that money into their pockets instead so that they could, you know, sell cures and remedies and holistic treatments to individuals for absurd prices, essentially being just as disingenuous as quote unquote big pharma is. And don't get me wrong, I am a holistic babe. I believe that certain, where is it, rocks and gems will make me feel better. But the reality is, is that I use these things in order to help me feel better in probably like a placebo kind of way, not in place of actually getting help that I do need. I'm not gonna turn to rocks instead of therapy. Now, this isn't me coming here and telling you guys that alternative medicine is bad or that holistic treatment is bad. I believe that holistic treatment can help aid individuals specifically with terminal illnesses, with providing them holistic care that helps their mind, body and soul to get through possibly one of the most difficult experiences and anxiety inducing experiences that a person may have to go through in their lifetime. But that should never be your sole form of treatment unless you can help it. I believe in the idea of complementary alternative medicine, as in your doctor will treat you for the illness and ailment it is that you have, but there is a complementary alternative medicine as well as holism that is integrated in order to heal the person. Ultimately, medicine is tailored towards one's genetic makeup. However, I think that there is a necessity to provide the best treatment options and getting people's minds in gear for the road ahead could be supremely beneficial. An article from the New York Times explored the connection between alternative medicine and the wellness industry, with the growing distrust in conventional medicine and its treatments. It shows that whilst this distrust or dissatisfaction with conventional medicine usually begins with the disappointing experience with treatments, as well as exhausting bureaucratic process and insurance claims. The wellness industry is a direct answer to these dissatisfactions. By promoting treatments, mainstream medicine doesn't know how to deal with. For example, in the case of chronic illness or misdiagnosis, moreover, wellness practices are a direct answer to the discomfort and hassle aspects of conventional treatments. It's not surprising the amount of wellness scams perpetuated by people on the internet. People who lack credentials, who do not face the same amount of scrutiny in proper regulation. The target audience is the vulnerable and the selling environment is practically wide open and this leads to the perfect recipe of quick and easy money as well as instant fame and a guru-like image for the influencers themselves. The story of Belle Gibson is a perfect image of the industry she benefited from which benefited from her in return. However, her being exposed as a scam artist did open people's eyes at least for a short while. People were able to see through Belle that health is one of the easiest images to fabricate and the most compelling. <sighs> oh my God, this was such a difficult video to make and hopefully the way it is that I've put it together will make it really interesting for you. This is an old story. It has been covered before. People know about it, but I kind of wanted to give a different, fresh perspective of it. This was actually helped and aided by a researcher. The researcher's name is Arthropology. This is another researcher it is that I'm looking into as possibly hiring to be a part of my team as well. So definitely check out their social medias. I will list them in the description box down below they're an incredible artist and deserve to be supported I also wanted to let you guys know that I am actually selling my makeup palette no more nudes on Gerard cosmetics as well so you can definitely check out the link below because currently it's on sale for like $20 or something so definitely check it out it's in their hot deals tab but I'll definitely link it below so you guys can check that out as well with that being said I hope you guys have an amazing day or evening whatever the hell it is that you're doing thank you so much to the twitch fam to the patreon fam and to the members
Fabulous fam, thank you for checking out our podcast. If you guys don't know, I host a podcast on my Patreon and in my members with my husband where we talk about love, life, sex, relationships, parenting and all of that good stuff. So if you're interested in that, definitely check that out and be a part of the member squad or the Patreons. I just want to say thank you guys again. I just really appreciate you guys allowing me the space to kind of get back in gear because I've been so nervous about putting this together, but hopefully it works out. I'm gonna stop like shitting on myself now, okay? With that being said, I hope you guys have an amazing day or evening, whatever the hell it is you're doing. And until next time, my voice is going. So I'm gonna say goodbye. It's my page. Bye.